Alright, so this is part two of that creating the nested type selector in a uh, simple table and chairs family. So in the last step what we did was we just pulled out our tabletop and our table base and we reinserted them into our uh, original model um, as nested family. So this is a nested tabletop. Here is my nested base. Alright, um, and then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try changing, I'm going to go to four blue squares and I'm going to change my width and height. So I go to change my width, change my width to six feet, change my height to three feet, change my depth to five feet, and then say OK. And notice the chairs move, but nothing else moves. All right. So the pra the um, let's see the parameters here under four blue squares, which is the parameters for our original file, no longer control those nested families. So what we need to do is relink those nested families back into our primary or our original. Uh, Revit file. All right. So to do that, and that's why I had you guys change all those parameters into instance family instance parameters because when you select that tabletop, you'll notice over here as a part of your instance parameters, there are all the parameters um, that we changed to instance parameters: the tabletop material, table leg material, width, height, and depth. So what I want to do is these are the parameters for the tabletop. All right. These are the parameters for the primary model here, the, our original model. So what I want to do is just link the two of them up. So to do that, what you're going to do is select the tabletop, and then you're going to go to each one of these parameters. You get this little white button over here to the um, to the right. Click on that button, and just select that table material that you want to link, or that sorry that parameter that you want to link to it. So this was tabletop material. So I'm going to change that to tabletop material. So now what I'm doing here is I'm linking that parameter that was in the tabletop to the parameter that's in the the model here. So say OK. All right, here is the table leg material. So that's the parameter for the um, table table leg material. All right, and table leg material. So I'm linking it up with the primary um, or original family file. Say OK. OK, sure. OK, so let, let's say go to like table leg material. So I select the table or the table top. I pick the parameter. All right, over here, and this little white button there to the um, to the right of it. I click that button, and in there should be, yeah, tabletop material for that, yeah, and then just link them up. All right, and I'm going to do that same thing with the width, uh, width, depth, and height. All right, so width, all right, select that to width, height to height, depth to depth. All right, so then you notice that the table does. So I have to repeat that same process now uh, with the table base. All right, so I'm going to just do that whole thing over again with the table base. So select your table base, and then go to each one of these parameters here uh, on the table base. So table top material, table leg material, all right, width. Okay, so now these when I go back to four blue squares and try to you to uh, change those parameters, it should work uh, and it should control now, now my nested families. So now the primary model here will control our nested family. So I'm gonna change that back to four. I'm gonna change that back to two foot six, and I'm gonna change that back to four feet again. I'm gonna say okay, and then so now um, so now our primary model is now controlling our nested uh, our nested families. Okay, so um, let's see. All right, so then our next step then is to create that new parameter, the parameter that basically is our nested type selector. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the parameter, and then um, let's see, what we're going to do. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to first create that parameter for my tabletop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that tabletop. All right, and then on the options bar, you should be able to create a parameter from here. So if on your options bar, go to label, and then where it says none, get that drop down member menu, and we're going to say add parameter. All right, and uh, what do we want to call this? We'll call this one tabletop. All right, table, oops. 
table top. Um, and one last thing too, uh, where it says group uh, parameter under, instead of other, change that to construction. All right, so the construction and say OK. All right, so what we did was we just created a parameter for our table top. And so now when I go to four blue squares, there's the parameter that we just created. All right, now you'll notice it says table top, so that's what we called it. And then in here, this is the value. So this is that current, that's that the name of that nested family, square table top. And then over here in parentheses, it says parking. Now parking, if you remember, is the is the category that we changed our tabletop into. All right, so it's under the ca parking category. So anything, any family that I load in here from now on, from this point on, any family that I load in here that is a parking, it, it is a part of the parking category, will show up in this list. So for example, if I do a round tabletop and I push this thing in here and uh, that round tabletop is in the parking family, then that'll come up as an option. So conceivably, I could put a tree in here, which will come in as the, uh, you know on a, on a parking or a car or something like that. And if I load it into this family, I'll have that car in this little drop-down menu or then this little type selector, and that will be an option that I'll have to um, uh, for my tabletop. So I could have a car tabletop. Um, now the reason I use use parking uh, in here is that you want to basically, because that's a problem, that could be a potential problem where anything you load into this family uh, under the category of parking could become a tabletop. Um, because of that, I try to use something that will probably never have anything on it, like parking. Because if you're doing furniture, say you're doing furniture for a project, more than likely you're not going to have anything in parking, you know, unless it's a really big project or you're really thorough. So, um, so that's why I use parking and entourage. Because if you're doing furniture and you're putting furniture in a in a building or something like that, more than likely you won't have entourage in there. So you won't get a bunch of trees and cars and stuff like that in this type selector. All right. So that makes sense so far. Yeah. All right, and then we'll do the same thing with the table base. So select the table base. Under label, go to add parameter. Call this one table base. All right, and group it under uh, construction. And then say OK. All right. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to do is, um, is then create our round table top okay so at this point so now that I've created so if I go to four blue squares now I have two of those uh, nested type selectors square table base and square table top all right so then the next thing I want to do is then I want to create a round table top under the parking parameter push that into this model and that'll show up in that type nested type selector all right so um, so let me do that so I'm gonna say okay so at this point I'm gonna hit save all right, and I'm going to hit close. So I'm going to close out of that model. And when I make my round tabletop, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to create it from my square tabletop family. So I'm going to load it. So open up your square tabletop nested family. All right, so there it is. Okay, so the key to this, to uh, when you're creating, uh, putting nested families in, is that Every family, every nested family, has to have the same exact parameters uh, and written the same way as all the others. For this to work, our round tabletop has to have the exact same parameters, spelled the exact same way, capitalized the exact same way as our uh, square tabletop. That's why I'm using the square tabletop uh, um, for a, for my base, you know, for the uh, for this, because it has all the same parameters in it. All I got to do is just change the geometry. So for my round tabletop, I'm just going to do a save as in my square tabletop. Say square, save as. All right, and we're going to call this one round tabletop. All right, so there's round tabletop. Let me go to my plan view. All right, there's my tabletop. All right, I'm going to go edit extrusion. All right, going to delete that. I'm going to replace it with a ra uh, with a round tabletop. Oops, sorry, I was already in there. All right, and I'm just going to give it a just a, any radius that I want for right now. All right, and then I'm going to hit finish. Okay, let's go to my 3D view. All right, so there's my round tabletop. I have a round uh, tabletop. Now I want to create the. Now I want to do this in such a way where I can create or I can change 
the uh, radius of that tabletop. All right. So what I want to do is I want to create a new parameter in here called radius. All right. So to do that, let's go back to our plan view. All right. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit that extrusion again. So select the round tabletop, go up to edit extrusion. All right. Pick that uh, outside thing. What I want to do is I want to actually get this. I want to turn this into a real uh, dimension. To do that, basically, I've selected the magenta geometry here. And then this little thing, it looks like a dimension string or an H or a bed, maybe even. Um, click on that, and what that does is it turns it into an actual dimension. All right, from this, then I select that dimension, and now I can turn that into a parameter. And that's going to be my radius parameter. So I select the, the dimension, go up here, add parameter, and say radius. Okay, and then say OK. All right, so now uh, I've got a radius parameter in here. And I've, I've found that when you're doing round geometries and you're doing um, parameters in them to control the dimension, that with round parameters, you always have to do it in sketch mode for some reason when it's in this magenta form. So um, so I hit finish. All right, so it disappears, that, but it's still there. If I go to four blue squares, it's still there. There's round, uh, there's radius. I can change that to two feet. All right, I can change that to one foot. All right, and I'm going to say OK. All right, and at this point, I'm not going to delete anything else. I'm just going to say Save. OK, because it's, already, it's uh, already a parking family, so that's good. Oh, you're right. Yep, you're right. I do have to make this an instance. That's correct. So let's go back to four blue squares. And let's go to Modify and change it to an instance parameter. And let's say OK. Good call on that. <laughs> yep, exactly. So I'm going to hit Save and then hit Close. We're done with that. Then go back into our tabletop, our original family here. So with my nested uh, tabletop and table base. And then, uh, okay, so you got to load it, though. you got to load it in a special way. You can't load it go by going Create and Component. you got to load it in through the back door. All right, so you got to go to, let's go to a Plan View, all right, and then go to uh, Insert and Load Family. Because the thing is, you can't have the square tabletop uh, and the round tabletop visible at the same time. It'll mess everything up. So what you got to do is just load it into the project. So what I'm going to do is I go to Insert, and I go to uh, load family. All right, and then I got to find that round tabletop that I just had. Well, it's getting crowded. Let's see, round table top. All right. And then what I'm going to do is go down here to families and under parking, hit the little plus button here. So I got a round tabletop and a square tabletop. So that's good. So let me go to my 3D view. Okay. And let's go to um, four blue squares. All right, and then let's go to my tabletop. And I can switch it to a round tabletop now. And then say OK. Ta da! And then I can switch it back. Um, actually, I can't switch it back. All right, so at that point, so this is uh, um, the end of part two. And then in part three, then we'll just kind of wrap this thing up. All right.